coming to you from the Sundown Theater in sunny downtown Columbia, Tennessee. It's me, Vance Capley, and tonight I am going to be discussing this really cool list that I made with my friend Andy Hardison, amazing gentleman, who's going to be helping me work on um, the second book from Captain Zero. If you haven't got book one, it's still available down the links below. Also, Monster Magazine number seven is available. Links also down below. So, now back to Sundown Cinema. Business is out of the way. Me and him have been making these lists for years. Favorite superheroes, favorite TV show, uh, favorite movies, um, favorite songs. And this time is a little bit different than any other list we've ever done. On this list, he asked me to come up with my 10 favorite uh, movie characters now it's not favorite film it's not favorite uh uh actor or anything like that it's just 10 favorite characters from films from movies <clears throat> so without further ado let's start with number 10. uh now i have a horrible time trying to pronounce this but the duke de richelieu and it was he was played by Christopher Lee in The Devil Rides Out from 1968. I love that the character is almost always calm. He's very serious. His knowledge uh, against evil is great. So he studies this stuff and he knows how to beat this evil. Uh, and there's this like really cool epic battle between this the the cast and the Duke. And they're fighting against the, the evil forces, you know, from Satan himself. And, um, you know, at the end of the whole thing, when it's all over with, you know, he's saying, you know, we should thank God that we survived this. And in real life, you know, from what I understand, Christopher Lee himself, he said, don't mess with Satanism. It's, it's, it's too much bad stuff going on with it. So it's very interesting. But when I saw this movie, I'd read about it. But when I saw this movie, I was completely blown away at, by its just the way it was done and i found out it was from a book by dennis wheatley and he had written several books about you know battling the occult and things so it's very interesting so if you get a chance to check out the devil rides out from 68 i highly recommend and as i said one of my favorite characters in cinema is the duke de richelieu uh played by christopher lee number nine is murder legendaire uh, played by Bella Lugosi from the film White Zombie, 1932. My favorite zombie movie. <clears throat> uh, I love that Bella plays this master of voodoo and magic and so wickedly evil. You just you just want to just, you just can't stand him. He's so evil. And he also has a command of a, a small army of zombies. And uh, it's almost, Bella's character is almost like a comic book supervillain. It's so cool. And if you haven't seen White Zombie and you're a Bella Lugosi fan, something's wrong with you. Please check out White Zombie 1932. Uh, but the character I, for number nine for my pick is Murder Legionnaire. Number eight uh, for me is The Wicked Witch of the West. Played by the wonderful Margaret Hamilton. And... She is the queen of campy cinematic villains to the point of likability. You know, you 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 despise the Wicked Witch, but you also like her because she is so wickedly evil. Uh, without Margaret Hamilton as the witch, I think Wizard of Oz would just been another dull musical. You know, my opinion, you know, whatever. Number seven, Wong Fu Hung, or Wong Fei Hung, pardon me. Uh, from Drunken Master 1 and 2, played by Jackie Chan. And I, I love the Drunken Master films. But I like the character Wong Fei Hung so much more than this the idea of this, or, or just the movies themselves, or the idea of the films. I like that he's kind of like a comical, dim-witted teenager in the first film who takes a stand, and it nearly kills him, of course, um, in the first film. And then when the second film rolls around, he's a little bit older, but he's still making mistakes. But as you, as an adult, when you make mistakes, it costs more. And it can affect people you love. And this time, Wong Fei Hung has to make a sacrifice to protect everyone else. So it's really cool. 
Um, his character is an amazing, uh, Jackie Chan's always an amazing, has amazing fight scenes, but Drunken Master 1 and 2, gold, cinematic gold. Number six for me is Tony Stark. Now you would say, well, I'm not Iron Man. No, 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 just Tony Stark. Anybody can wear a suit of armor, but Tony Stark, played by Robert Downey Jr., is just amazing. Um, almost perfect casting. I mean, you can't, I can't think of anything else except for maybe the Wicked Witch from Wizard of Oz being perfect casting, but there you go. Um, uh, Tony Stark is a, is a flawed, but likable hero in these film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I really dig uh, watching him fail and then come back when the, when, you know, when things really go south. I love the cinematic version of, uh, of Stark with his snark and his wit. Now that that's not really in the uh, comics of the seventies and eighties. He's not snarky. He's not witty. He's more of a self-sacrificing character. Now, as time goes on in the cinematic universe, he becomes the character you read in the comics of the 70s, 80s, self-sacrificing. Um, the best way I can describe the cinematic version of Tony Stark is like a cocky jet pilot mixed with a screwed up mad scientist who wears a suit of armor and fights bad guys. <laughs> uh, number five, Steve Nichols. Now, this, is, this guy was played by John Ritter on a movie called Hero at Large. Now, Steve Nichols believes... In a character he plays so much that because of uh because Nickel stopped at a convenience store and stopped, you know, he believes this character so much, he believes in it, he believes in doing the right thing. So when this crime there's a crime that happens at this convenient mart and he stops this this thing and he feels like, you know, this is maybe the direction I need to go. So throughout the film, he continually is fighting. Uh, street thugs and criminals. He actually actually gets shot in one segment of the film and is going to stop doing it because he got shot. And then a marketing dude convinces him, you know, you know, we can make money for you doing these heroic, these heroic feats. So they start doing stage events to help get the mayor reelected. And, uh, well, it's, he's exposed. And he says, at first I was a hero, but you know, this is for them. You know, well, once he says that, that's over. And the cool thing for me is in the end, Steve Nichols comes into his own as a real hero. He doesn't have to pretend to be someone else pretending to be a hero. He actually gets to be a real hero uh, without giving anything away and um, without being Captain Avenger, the character in the uh, movie within the movie. It's a, it's a wonderful uh, New York style love story, uh, very 70s. Um, even though it was made, you know, in the eighties, it very, it feels very seventies. Um, it's just a great film, but as I said, my favorite character, one of my favorite characters is Steve Nichols, the character from, uh, Hero at Large with John Ritter. Number four. Now this is not really, I don't, I didn't know if this would count as a character, but it does according to our little rules that I get. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right so number four is godzilla this character's been around since 54 and his reign his films range from dark to ludicrous but for some reason i really enjoy the character i love watching godzilla battle other monsters and smashing cities but i also dig the little things like the way he reacts to situations almost like a human would you know uh you know, like like one time he dances, uh, does his victory dance, or, or or you know makes the motion as if someone's snapping their fingers when he just missed something. You know that kind of thing. Um, watching Godzilla is is like catching a really good wrestling match. Your guy's losing the fight, and you get really caught up in the fight, and then you forget these are dudes in suits, except for CGI versions of Godzilla. And you cheer and you get all carried away and junk. And uh, <laughs> it's just so much fun. You know, he comes back at the end of these things just like in a big wrestling match, big stage thing. And he whoops the heel or the bad guy in the thing. And it's just so much fun. All right, number three in my favorite cinematic characters of all time is James Bond. Now, I love James Bond. I don't 
really care who's playing the part. Uh, I love that the cinematic James Bond, now I'm starting to read the books, the novels, the Ian Fleming novels, and the character is a little bit, he's more dark. But the cinematic version's a little more lighter in tone, not by much, but some. And Bond is like this smooth, he's very smooth. Uh, he's a ladies' man. He's a great fighter. And it doesn't matter what style of fighting he gets mixed up in, he's always able to, you know, hold his own. Um, I like that he's cool under pressure. He doesn't freak out about things unless he's provoked. And then when you do that, all hell breaks loose. I like when the MI6 worries, like, is Bond going to uh, go rogue or something? And, it, you know, when he does, they completely lose it. And it's like, oh, what are we going to do? Uh, but that's part of the charm of this character is that he is that dangerous that even the own, his own people that he works for are terrified of him. Uh, such a neat character. So awesome. And uh, that's why he's my number three pick. Number two is The Man With No Name. This is Clint Eastwood. Um, he is the coolest bounty hunter hero in cinematic history, in my opinion. Uh, he, the Man With No Name influenced so many other characters, not only in film, but on TV and cartoons and in comics, uh, including, you know, you can look at Wolverine or, or Boba Fett. There you go. And yeah, a lot of people say, well, you know, it's, you know, from the Kurosawa stuff. Yes, but it's like it went a different direction and it has a different feel as it goes on in the three films. Um, okay. Um, the man with no name is a great fighter. He likes to, you know, he's good at playing people off each other and he has just a little bit, little sense of humor, which really is cool. You know, it's a little bit. Um, stuff his nails and he doesn't stand down from any fight. I'm, I've never seen him just go, eh, I'm done. I can't, I don't want to get shot today. All right. Now we're at our number one pick. Woody Wilkins played by Michael Crawford in Condor Man 1981. And if you know me personally or have been watching my videos long enough, you knew I was going to pick this character. Woody is a cartoonist who dreams of being a secret agent, meets and falls in love with uh, the Russian agent Bear, a.k.a. Natalia. Uh, she wants to defect, and because of uh, a little brief uh, action-packed uh, uh, meeting in Istanbul, she requests American secret agent Condor Man to help her. His love for her is so powerful that he risks life and limb to get her back to America to help her defect and also win her heart. Now, I love how he uses, Woody uses his uh, imagination to figure out ways to battle and eventually defeat the villain of the film, Krokov, Russian villain, you know. I enjoy his friendship with his pal Harry and uh, played by the dad from the Teen Wolf movies. And he's such a neat character. And one of the things that I enjoy is, is watching this character fail at being this, um, this uh, self-appointed, trying to be the self-appointed hero he wants to be, and then has to fall down completely and then get back up as himself. And that, I, I find a lot of films, especially like with this one and Hero at Large, I like that, where you, you know, you, maybe you set your goals too high you know, and you fail, you know, you get back up and you try again, but you start over as yourself. You, it's kind of like you had to get knocked off your pedestal and uh, had to rebuild who you, not rebuild, but go back to square one and be yourself. And once he's himself, her heart is one, obviously. And that's, I think that's, I think that's fun right there. But that was my 10 favorite cinematic uh characters but that's pretty much it for this episode keeping it short and brief got a lot to do so i hope you enjoyed tonight's um sundown cinema and uh, we'll see you next time when the lights go when the sun goes down and the lights go low and the projector starts grinding see you next time or something like that <laughs> bye
Vance Kepley is a self-taught artist who has worked in various mediums, including drawing, painting, and graphic design for over 20 years. He now has his designs here on Tee Public, old school, unique, stylish. He is also available to help you with your original Tee Public designs. Make sure you visit Vance Kepley Art 1972 at teepublic.com. You'll be glad you did. Ha <laughs> ha